In today's video, we're going to be checking out everything we could do with Google AI Studio. If you don't know what that is, think of it like OpenAI's dashboard, Copilot's dashboard. This is, as a developer, our way of accessing AI, but through Google. Therefore, we're going to learn everything we can do within this dashboard when it comes to pricing, creating prompts, and basically what this means for us when we create software or integrating it within no-code solutions like Zapier. Let's go ahead and get started and jump into today's video. I am excited, y'all. We have a nice little dashboard now that is dedicated for Google AI and its API and everything we can do when it comes to leveraging it in software and automations. This is fun stuff here. I'm gonna make sure to leave a link to this in the description down below. I will also leave a link to everything else I reference in this video, such as the pricing and a quick little cookbook of different problems we can start using. Let's go ahead and get going here and sign into Google AI Studio. Once we're in the dashboard here, we have a couple of different options here. So anything below that little dash line is purely for educational purposes and just giving you more insight of how to leverage this platform. Right off the bat, if you want us to start leveraging the API key in automation softwares, you can simply hit get API key. Once you're here, you can go ahead and click create API key. Now, if you want to see an entire video I dedicated for that topic, check out that right there. As I go over how do you integrate an API key into Zapier, but this can apply to other automation softwares. And on top of that, the advantageous fact that it's actually free to use this kind of API key in that context. If you don't even know what an API key is, the purpose of it is that it allows you to access the endpoints we found in the conversational model like Gemini, and they know how to charge you. Basically, this is you, I'm gonna charge you, you use me. Now that we're on the topic of API keys and getting charged money, let's figure out pricing. Coming over to pricing, we have a couple of different models, kind of like what we saw with OpenAI and ChatGPT4 and 3.5. Therefore, because we're familiar with those, let's go ahead and compare the two. Looking at Google's most comprehensive model as of now, they structure their pricing a little bit different than what we see with OpenAI when it comes to input and output. Specifically, they charge based off context, and then you can kind of get discounted rates off less contextual window being used. For reference, you probably rarely would ever go over a 128K context unless you're putting in a ton of data. So most of these numbers, you can probably lean towards the 3.5 and the output of 10.5 or $3.50 and $10.50. Just a real quick comparison, that compared to OpenAI, which has an input as of now of $5 per 1 million tokens and $15 per 1 million tokens. So we're looking at a discounted price between $3.50 to five and then $10.50 to 15. Knowing this, depending on your output and depending on your workload, you may choose between the two depending on which gives you the most reliable answers at scale. Coming over to 1.5 flash, we can compare this pricing to maybe ChatGPT 3.5. With the input of 0.35, we're looking at an input of 0.5 from ChatGPT. And then coming down here for an output of $1.05, really random, we got an output over here of $1.50. But pricing might not be everything. You may want to lean towards for quality, but both the models could potentially provide you the value point that you're looking for. Therefore, you may lean towards Gemini, depending on your context. We have gone ahead and got pricing out of the way. One other really cool thing to keep in mind is that when you're just playing around with it, getting comfortable with it, it is free of charge. Also within Google AI Studio, we have the ability to fine tune models and create prompts just to play around. It's like almost like OpenAI's playground that we saw earlier. This is their version. So when I create a prompt, I can choose between a chat prompt and a structured prompt. Starting simple here, let's go ahead and just do a chat prompt and understand this user interface. So right off the bat, we can rename it. We'll go ahead and say Chef Gemini. Not the star sign, I'm not talking about Scorpio, Leo. I'm talking about what Google decided to name their AI. It's say this is not Bard anymore. This is not Bard. From here, we have a couple other different options here, such as the model. So we saw that earlier. We can choose between 1.0 Pro, Flash Pro, 1.5 Pro. Also, if we create new tuned models, we can choose those as well. For this example here, we're going to go with the 1.5 Pro. It doesn't seem like you can set a max tokens limit as of now, but it has a max tokens count of like a million. So we're good there. Temperature. What is temperature, Corbin? This is very valuable. This is extremely valuable. Think of creating outputs at scale. User 333 gets the same type of output as user 967. This is where temperature comes into play. A lower temperature is very consistent and follows your instructions to a T. This is really good for scaling and outputs. A higher temperature is you're giving more creativity to the model. Typically, when you're creating prompts, you're going to go with a low temp. You're going to go very low, like almost ice cold low, like 0.1 low. You also have the ability to adjust top P, but in this context, we only have to care about temperature. They're kind of similar in regards to creativity meter. So for now, we're pretty set here. You can ignore the stop sequence. Let's proceed. Now that we put in our variables, let's understand the prompt itself. So we have the ability to put in system instructions. I want you to think of this as the context for the system. So for example, we could say, give me precise and concise outputs. 
for the type something part here, that's your user message. That's gonna be the data that we basically ask the chatbot to do or the API endpoint in this context would be like, how many pizza shops are in New York? Like questions like that. Now we're gonna do a simple example together, but if you wanna see an in-depth video showing you everything you need to know when it comes to AI prompt engineering, no matter the model, check out that video right there. Go in depth, show you how to create system instructions and show you how to create user instructions from a pretty, pretty comprehensive perspective. Comprehensive perspective, we'll let it slide. Let's keep it simple here. We're just gonna say precise and concise outputs. I didn't spell that right. And then this will be the user message. Typically within your API call, you'll be like message, quotation marks and provide if you're writing in JSON. And to be funny, let's actually see if it can find how many pizza shops are in New York. I highly doubt we'll be able to answer this. How many pizza shops in New York, New York. Hit run, that's cool. That's a little bit of a ticker showing you how long it takes to calculate. Sadly, it does not have access to that information. I wasn't expecting it. Let's go ahead and actually try a different question here. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete this and let's try a different question here. So we're gonna go ahead and say, what is the population of the USA? And there we go. So we got our answer here, 335 million. Notice how I say precise and concise outputs. What happened if I change this? We can go ahead and edit this real quick as well. What happened if I change this to very long two paragraphs, right? I mean, this just shows you system instructions are followed to a T. I'm gonna go ahead and copy this, delete these two. And if I do again, Notice how the model is now giving very long answers comparative to that short and concise answer. That shows you the power of system instructions. That is very, very pertinent. You set up good system instructions because a lot of time when you're proctoring with API endpoints, most of your input uh, for the like what to do is gonna be the system instructions and your user message should just be the data you want to reformat, restructure, or do something with. Now with these outputs, you can see there's a couple of different things we can do with them, such as moving them up, editing them, or having a rerun, click it, you know, give me a different answer. Let's see what it looks like if I keep rerunning the same prompt. And then obviously we can delete it, copy rendered or copy marked down. Now a really big point here that I like about this dashboard is the ability to see how many tokens are expended per run. With this token counter here, this can give you better context of how much it's gonna cost you if you ran it like a thousand times. Check out that other video I referenced earlier if you want an in-depth tutorial on how to prompt engineer. Let's move on. Now Google AI Studio also gives us the ability to create tuned models. Think of this like fine tuning that we saw with ChatGPT and OpenAI. This is super cool. I'm gonna have to do a video on this. Make sure to subscribe as I'll do one in the future, probably soon, on how to leverage this. This gives us the ability to upload a Google Sheet CSV as context for the outputs. And from there, you can actually reference that as an API endpoint within your software. So you don't have to worry about proctoring too much in the system instructions because the actual underlying model itself understands the context. Did a whole video on this for fine tuning a ChatGPT model. So we'll do one for Gemini as well. Seems like a big thing within this Google AI Studio is the ability to integrate it within your drive as well. So for context, we can use sheets, CSVs, images, and other forms of data within our Google AI Studio. From here, there is a ton of other resources you can look at when learning how to leverage this kind of technology. I think a big one that you can check out is the prompt gallery. Simply click it. And we can go ahead and scroll down from all these different options here of different types of prompts that were created for a specific purpose. So it's kind of like templates. Think of it that way. For example, we can do blog post creator. Click it. And it'll be directly added to our studio here with all of the relevant information filled out. And I can simply hit run. And here we go. So we got the text, image, and a little blog created about it. Now, one important thing to do is make sure you are connected and logged in. It'll prompt you throughout your workflow to connect your main account to this Google AI studio. It's going to allow you to save relevant chats from the past. I'm going to hit OK here. And we can go ahead and reference them. If we want to use them for the future, now we have access to it as a nice little history tab. That is a basic rundown of everything we can do within Google AI Studio. As of now, I'm going to make more like niche videos on different topics about this studio. So you can kind of get a better understanding of how to leverage Gemini's API, especially in the context of software, as now we're going to be able to create fine-tuned versions of Gemini's API, but also just understand how to prompt better in the context of software. So make sure to leave a like. It's completely free. Make sure to subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Got two videos for you based off your clicks, based off YouTube's algo. Are they good? Are they bad? I'll see you in the next video.